Welcome to 60 Second Civics from the Center for Civic Education. I'm Mark Gage. The 15th Amendment was designed to protect the right of all men to vote, including African American men, and the 19th Amendment was meant to protect the right of all women to vote. Despite these amendments to the Constitution, states throughout the South erected barriers to prevent African Americans from voting. These barriers included literacy tests, grandfather clauses, and poll taxes. The 24th Amendment, ratified on January 23, 1964, was meant to eliminate poll taxes as qualifications to vote in federal elections. Poll taxes were taxes a person had to pay in order to vote. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 was another nail in the coffin of discriminatory voting practices. It further banned poll taxes and outlawed tests of all kinds as requirements for voting, which included literacy tests. It also provided for federal involvement in overseeing voting in counties with a history of discrimination. It is important to note that all of this voting reform came about because of the nonviolent activism of the civil rights movement, especially the focus on voting rights that took place in the summer of 1964, the so-called Freedom Summer, and the Selma to Montgomery March of the spring of 1965. The violent response by authorities to this peaceful movement shocked mainstream America and made Congress more willing to pass meaningful civil rights legislation with the support of President Lyndon B. Johnson. Finally, in 1966, the Supreme Court held in Harper v. Virginia Board of Elections that poll taxes were unconstitutional in any elections, federal, state, or local. The court grounded its decision in the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, not the 24th Amendment, which applies only to federal elections. That's all for today's podcast, 60 Second Civics, where civic education only takes a minute.